Hey, welcome to another great day. Since I'm in California, that means we have electricity and nothing is on fire near me. It's amazing. What could make this day truly unique for you are some tactics that we're about to explore about managing reality. And who knows, this could be the most important podcast you've ever listened to. Welcome to episode 396 of Business Brain, the entrepreneur's podcast here for Wednesday, September 7th, 2022, where we are small businessing with our business brains and living life with our business brains every week and really every moment of every week. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify.com slash SBS, where you can go to get your 14 day trial and full access to their entire suite of features, and Bambi.com, B A M B E E.com, where you can have Bambi help with your dedicated HR manager. It's great. 99 bucks a month is where their prices start. We'll talk more about each of those shortly here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, on Apple Event Day, I'm Dave Hamilton. <laughs> and here in Lafayette, God, I used to watch those Apple events so much. <laughs> I'm Shannon Jean. <laughs> happy to be here and kind of happy that I'm not so connected to those events anymore. Sure. I, I still find them very interesting, but my livelihood doesn't depend on them anymore. Mm. And for a long time, I could not imagine my world without that type of thing. Yeah. It, it, you know, and it's kind of those things where you do it for so long, you start to get so focused and you know, we're going to talk about managing reality today. And that was for me, one of the hardest things about letting go and taking on something new uh, and um, realizing that with that particular business that I had outlived my own usefulness and it was time to sell it to somebody else. It was very difficult for me to realize that I wouldn't wake up every day, look at Mac Surfer, go to Mac Observer, you know, get all those things going, follow every single event. Um, but now a few years after that, uh, ended i'm 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 happy to uh not be beholden to it i should say yeah it's interesting because i i never well it, there was a time where i really obsessed over apple news right but, I, yeah, but yeah. even well you were in the business well but <laughs> right? even then like i was always a a fan of apple's computers right like it started with the apple II the apple II series then, then it you know went to the Mac, and obviously it, it spilled over into the iPhone and the Apple Watch and all of that stuff. But I was I never I never really cared much. Certainly not on a day to day basis. This might come as a surprise to a lot of people. I never really cared about Apple News. It was more about the products and the software, which is also a product. Okay, right? you, you know, yeah. and yeah. and you know, my life before and and now after Mac Observer has been helping people get the most out of their computers, generally troubleshooting, but not always, right? Yeah, you know, right. teaching people about things they didn't know they could do with their technology and all that stuff. So for me, it, like the the daily grind part of Mac Observer, the daily grind of focusing on Apple's comings and goings was never truly captured me. Like I, I like watching their events. I loved watching Steve jobs on stage. And I actually love sure. Apple's new style of events where it is a, a produced event or a I produced like, show, like right? Yeah. Cause yeah. they don't have, like, they don't have Steve jobs anymore. They don't have anyone like him and they know that, right? But what they yeah. do have is a fantastic creative team to build these productions that quite frankly, I don't think they had back when Steve no, no. was doing the dog and, and, and pony shows and they didn't. Need yeah. It. And I, no. I like it too. And I like how they broadened out the, the presenters. It's people from all different yes. walks of the company. So you get this kind of, uh, I know this word is overused, but it's diverse and, it, it and is. You, you get to hear from different people at Apple, which I actually like, I think it's pretty cool. No, it's great. They've embraced who they currently are, not who they were. Yeah. Right. Smart. And, and, and maybe that is who they were back then, but it just like Steve overshadowed it all or, or just the style of the, the event. But so I always enjoyed the events mostly like there was, there were a few, even Steve, there were a couple of Steve jobs keynotes that just went on too long. The 10 great things yeah. about OS 10 or something at Macworld was, it was a notable <laughs> Uh, uh, flop, in my opinion, and I, I don't think I'm alone there. But yeah, I never like the daily the daily obsession with Apple News. It, for me, like it, it's interesting. You mentioned Max Surfer 
And Mac Observer, thank you for saying that. That's great. Uh, but, you know, Mac Surfer was where you'd go for the news. For me, it was Mac Fix It and Macintosh. Oh, yeah. Right. But those oh, were yeah, the troubles, guys. Those were the troubleshooting <laughs> sites. Yeah. yeah. I, we employed yeah, yeah. Ted Landau for a long time at Mac Observer. Yeah. yeah. Rick yeah. Ford. And Rick and Ford. Yeah. 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 But but th- th- that was more about the 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 nitty gritty. Right. The, the technical details, because that was that helped me in my life. It informed me in a way that helped me in my career of troubleshooting and helping other people. Right. So it was always about what can the tech do for my life? Not I mean, I, I was into the nitty gritty, but mostly just to to sort of as to serve a a, a greater need so these these apple events are interesting a lot of it i have to go like starting a couple of weeks ago i've been running the betas on my iphone or whatever because I, I like to to experience the new features i like to have some working knowledge of them so that when our listeners of mac geek Gab start sending in questions i've got you know some some guidance for them right um, yeah, it makes sense but like I had to go start actively, intentionally reading the rumor sites a couple of weeks ago so that I could go into today's event knowing what the industry thinks is going to happen. Oh, yeah. But it would not yeah. have been on my radar otherwise. Like even even a year ago, running Mac Observer, it just it was like, oh, yeah, I got to pay attention to the rumors. OK, what are they saying now? It's like, wait, what do you mean they're not going to have an iPhone mini in the 14 size? I love the iPhone mini. I, am I the only one that bought it? Evidently, yes. So <laughs> a couple uh, more people, but not very many. No, evidently not. So, you know, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And, you know, uh, today we're going to talk about the principles of managing reality, uh, kind of a Ray Dalio thing. If you don't know who Ray, uh, I think it's how you pronounce, pronounce his, uh, yeah. his last name. Anyway, he's got he's super successful. And clearly, Apple, even, you know, with with Steve Job, who is, you know, the famous reality distortion field, but clearly a company that is famous for managing reality is is Apple. And uh, I, 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 to your point, I really respect how they've shifted into managing things based on what their strengths are now versus relying on one rock star personality. Yes. And, you know, now they've let the production values, you know, step in to make it the uh, the wow factor maybe a little bit more and they've introduced more people which is i would imagine healthier for the for the business in the long run you know what it's time for i love that sound because that's the sound of another sale on shopify the all-in-one commerce platform to start run and grow our businesses shopify gives entrepreneurs like us the resources once reserved for big business so upstarts startups and established businesses alike can sell everywhere you can synchronize your online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility and shopify has been part of our journey here too shannon and i have used shopify in the past and you don't have to think about it because it just works. Success is a million milestones on a forever evolving path. And like us, Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. You can reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps. Like I said, you can synchronize your online and in-person sales. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, to start your free trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right. So I found this tweet uh, out there from Alex Banks, the Alex Banks on, on Twitter. And it started, as these often do, you know, as a Twitter thread is what it is. And I'll link it in the show notes at businessbrain.show. It said, Ray Dalio is worth $22 billion. He wrote one of the greatest business books of all time. Here are the 10 best lessons from Principles, which is the name of the book. I'll call it Ray Dalio's Business Brain Principles. Uh, and I, nice. I, I don't know, you know, because because we got to brand ourselves here. I think Ray yeah, Dalio would appreciate that. Co-opting his Absolutely. stuff as though it's ours. Yeah. So forget that any of this came from Ray Dalio. All of this advice is 100 <laughs> percent. Or Alex Shannon. Or Alex Banks. Alex who? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> the first one. I love this. And you know, we're talking. Well, I think of life as a game. 
and, and I'll read what what Alex. I'll read our thoughts on this, and then uh, <laughs> we can talk about our thoughts on this. No, Alex wrote uh, each problem and failure you face is a puzzle you need to solve. When you solve the puzzle, you get a gem in the form of a principle. This helps you avoid similar problems and failures in the future. What have we been saying for seven and a half years? We love mistakes. We wrote a book yeah. called We Love Mistakes. A lot about it. Here yeah. it is, right? Like, you have to treat it as a game. You have to. Well, yeah. And and I met a guy. Um, I'm, a, I'm a hunter. I, I hunt waterfowl in the winter. And I met this farmer. He was taking me out to show me this place to see if I wanted to lease it. Sure. And he made this. He, he This is it was kind of this grizzly old guy, an old pickup truck. But obviously very successful. And he made a comment to me. He goes, you know, I was about 40 years old before I decided to get in the game. And I, I, I said, well, and I just kind of didn't say anything. I, you know, I just yeah. waited for him to keep going. And, you know, he talked about working for other people and, and doing all this kind of stuff. And he finally realized that to be successful, I had to get in the game and start experiencing these things, successes, failures, solving these problems, trying to figure out the puzzle. Yeah. And, you know, I think this encompasses it really well is you, you have to, or you, or you, I would encourage you to, uh, you know, get involved, figure out these things and getting out there on your own is obviously has worked for Dave and I, and, uh, I, I highly recommend it. And, you know, it is a puzzle and it does need to be solved, but you, you're going to solve new things every single day, yes. you know, and just when you figure out, you think you're going to get, Oh, I got it figured out. You're going to get slammed with a bunch of them. You know, I, I woke up really early this morning and I've just got a ton of stuff in my head. I've got to figure out, solve these problems and everything. And it's all how you frame it. And so I really like this, that, uh, this concept, if you think about it as a puzzle to solve, you kind of put these things in a, in order, um, they can help you find success. And yeah, and you got to play with different orders. You you said it's all about how you frame it. I, I would add a clause to that. It's all about how you frame it to yourself. And and that brings us to point yeah. number two, which is pain plus reflection equals progress. The failures you encounter allow you to build a better system of principles. This makes your path to success smoother and smoother. And it's exactly what you were just saying that. You, you have to it, it's about how you look at these things, not how you convince other. I mean, part of it. Oh, yeah. After the after the fact, the secondary thing is how you convince others to look at them. And that's how you lead a team. But you have to do it for yourself first, because if, if you're not looking at it the right way, you, you're not going to be able to convince other people, too. So, I, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. You, I look at this whole these these 10 things that we're going to go over today. It's almost like you're building a factory in your brain. Yeah. And, Ooh. you know, you've got to stack this stuff together. You're going to build this good foundation and you have to work it on yourself first before you go out and start talking to other people uh, and, and or getting your team. And so uh, much of this is self-analysis, you know, the, these understanding yes. that mistakes are going to happen, understanding that. This is, you know, it is like a game and it is this puzzle you're putting together, um, you know, and, and so it's, uh, you know, it's important to understand it's OK. We're going to build this thing in our head and then we're going to expand it out from there. I think that's uh, it'll help I, make yeah, it easy for sure. Easier, anyway, no, number um, three is. I, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. Well, I, yeah, I'm mean, number three. Be radically open minded. You know, this is great. It's very difficult. I if, from speaking from my own experience, um, you know, he says, seek the truth, regardless of how hard it is to hear. What am I missing? What's wrong with this work? Do I know enough about this topic to have an opinion? Um, it, you know, it, and he ends it subdue the ego and use feedback to grow. It's that's difficult uh, for me speaking for myself, knowing that you know, I'm weak in so many areas and I often overlook them. I have a hard time giving up. I have a hard time delegating. Um, I, we've talked about this on the show before. I often think I'm hard to replace, <laughs> you know, and that's, those are not good things. Yeah. That's all, that's to, our ego talking. And yeah, it is course. like the ego has a place. I, I love yes. what you've said before. And, and I, I, I think you got this or at least intuited it from listening to Scott Adams, but, uh, but maybe not. I'll, I'll credit you and you can you can credit sure somebody, else somebody else if you want. Somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Sure but but it, it, it was, you know, use the ego as a tool. And right. I, I mean, these things are super easy to say. Right. Like we can sit here and proselytize this stuff. It's super difficult to use your ego as a tool, meaning 
the moments where it's actually going to help you. And this requires a massive amount of self-awareness that I certainly don't have. Right. That I strive for. And, and you know, when it's really going to help me using my ego as a tool is, is, is like and letting my ego out is great. But other times you've got to just suppress it and and use humility That's and the harder sh- part. Shut the yeah. ego down. Yeah. Well, I don't I mean, I, honestly, I found I find both of these things hard because yeah. there's moments, you know, where I, we, we were talking about this on you know, we had that crossover episode with Gig Gab and uh I, on the most recent episode, we were talking about a thing where I think it was Todd Suckerman, uh, who was the drummer from Styx, put out a thing that said, as a drummer, you need to play with confidence. And he's right, you know, in a, in a rock band setting or any kind of, uh, you know, chamber music setting that, you know, you have to play with confidence because if your bandmates feel that you are not confident, then they like that, that shakes everything. Right. And yeah, it makes sense. And, yeah. it, but where that gets really difficult is let's say I'm subbing on a gig and we're playing a song I've never played before. Right. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I still have to play with confidence. I, I remember one, we were on literally on stage. We were doing this cabaret thing at a theater, which was uh, a bunch of kids were coming on and singing. Each kid sang one song. We had one rehearsal. Uh, and then, and then we played this show. And at at set break for this thing or whatever you're supposed to call it in a theater intermission or something, I, uh, I I had this like somebody mentioned Kelly Clarkson. I was like, oh, God, why is that sticking in my brain? Like, was I supposed to prepare something? Nah, I don't think so. And so we get on stage. We're like three songs into the second act, second set, whatever. And uh, the music director who p- plays the piano, he looks at me. He's like, yeah, it's, you know, whatever that Kelly Clarkson tune. I'm like, great. I, there's no drums on this. Right. And he looks at me and he's like, you're kidding. Right. And I'm like, uh, no. Uh, and he's like, no, no, this is like, it's like a punk song. It's like the drums drive this. And I'm like, crap, I didn't, I don't know this song at all. And, and I'm like, are there, and so I asked him the, the important questions. Are, are there breaks in it? Okay, great. Do you know the drum part? Yes. Okay. And he and I had worked together a ton. So we had a bit of a, you know, a, a mind meld ability. And I said, all right, you, you, you know, you guide me here, but I had to play as though I knew the part. I had to play as though I wrote it, even though I had no freaking idea what was happening next. Right. And, and so in that sense, using my ego to pretend like I was confident was really good. Uh, But in the same moment, also using humility with that one human that, that uh, was going to guide me through this, right. It's, it's two things. And this happens in business all the time. And I screw it up all the time. I, you know, it's, it's, I am often reflecting back to, you know, use the, uh, the, the pain plus reflection equals progress and saying, okay, how would I have handled that differently? You know? And in that moment, actually I did the right thing. Like I, I, in reflecting back, it's like, well, I mean, Really, what I should have done is prep the stupid song the day before. But, you know, in light of or in lieu of that, I think I did the right thing. But uh, I yeah. don't always do that and thing. Yeah. Learning to to ramp your ego up and down is what Scott Adams says. And yeah. OK. Because there's, it's, yeah. I, I also call it like reading the room. You yeah. know, if 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 there's an opera, if you're in a group or working with people or in some situation that calls for you to stand up and be confident and to take on some role to help move things forward, you should do that. If it calls for you to kind of lay back and, uh, you know, I always say, you know, Hey, I can be, I'm, I think I'm a pretty good leader, but I'm, I think I'm also a very good follower. You know, if well, someone yeah. else steps up and you're like, Hey, you know, tell me what to do and I'll just go grind it out. Um, I think those are, are really good skills to work on. Um, and, and we're, you always have to keep working on it. Yes. Yeah. It, right. It's, it's, it's a, it's a constant learning experience. And the next one feeds into this too. Uh, number four is use root cause analysis. All problems are manifestations of their root causes. Do you lose track of time? Are you late for meetings, calls, or appointments? Learn principles of scheduling reminders to avoid the pain of being late. And this is quite frankly, I think this is one of the places where I project the most, Shannon, because I get really frustrated really fast with people who like this is a great example who are late for things or whatever. It's like or or don't get their tasks done. And it's like, why haven't you solved this problem yet? And I know that what I'm saying is 
I'm trying to solve this. Like I'm perpetually trying to solve this problem for myself and trying all different kinds of things. And I've got a couple of good systems in place that keep me from being destitute and, you know, all of that stuff. But I know that I could be better at all of these things. In fact, we were talking about my scheduling this morning where I, I was trying to mold reality uh, around time and, especially when someone else is involved, AKA you, my, you know, we're co-hosts here. Uh, yes. <laughs> my, my, my reality of time needs to match yours. Uh, and especially it needs to match the time that we've scheduled and I made it, but it was, it was, it was tight. Cause I, I, yeah, I was, <laughs> I overbooked myself in a sense, but you know, this, but I get super frustrated with people when, when, especially oh, I, for I this stuff. Yeah. 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 I do too. And, and I, I do, you know, like this, it's, you know, I think it's a great idea to lay out the symptoms of what's going on, yeah. but then really look deeper for what the systemic problem is and see if you can figure it out in, in regarding yourself and, and then looking at, okay, what ways can I, uh, you know, address those systemic issues. And for me, I, I always, th if I'm having the same systemic issue over and over again, then I really have to work on it. And, I, and I'll write it on my quartet board, you know, in front of me, um, you know, take care of these things. Uh, uh, and, and it's just something you got to keep reminding yourself at. It, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number five is find your weaknesses. So, you know, we're, we're kind of now that we're off to the races, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Right? We're saying all these things. Finding a weakness yeah, is like yeah. finding a leaky pipe in your house. It, it, like I'm always happy. I, I'm not happy when I see the results of a leaky pipe. I am very happy when I find which pipe is leaking, right? Because then I can get to solving. I'm not, I'm not trying to hunt for the problem. I know the symptom. Now I know where the problem is. And then it's, you know, you can find a workaround. So now you get, well, if the first thing you do is you get a bucket to collect the water wherever it's coming. Uh, you can run away. You could sell the house. You could build a principle, yeah. right? You could learn how to fix the pipe. Develop principles to deal with weaknesses, uh, you know, and well, I, I think he I think he presented these three things the find a workaround, the run away or build a principle as three alternatives. I think I, I think they can be mixed and matched, although I'm not convinced there are times when running away is the right answer, uh, you know, I, like even in retrospect. But I think his point is, you know, figure out how to fix the pipe, figure out how to fix yourself. And yeah, even if you can't fix it, correct. Uh, you know, that principle could be, I need to bring in talent when I don't have those skills, right? Yeah. Um, so yes, it could be a weakness, but a principle we talk about on the show frequently yeah. is once you've identified, like I suck at accounting and things. So I've always either have a very good accountant, well, I have a great accountant that I work with, but when I start new businesses, I'm often looking for a financial partner that can help offset set that weakness and then I can go talk and lead from the top line and sales and marketing and all that kind of stuff while some well I know someone else is going to help me with the finance part. You know, when we're running our businesses, our employees can create all kinds of interesting situations. Like somebody isn't showing up or doing their work when they're supposed to. Or an employee reports a serious issue like sexual harassment and you're not sure if you have a documented policy you better talk to Bambi, our sponsor here, because with Bambi, you get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly, team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. These HR managers, it's fantastic. They're U.S.-based people, and they have lots of people, but you get one that is dedicated to your business, giving you access to the HR expertise and personal touch that you need. And an HR manager can easily cost you up to 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at just $99 per month. So you can schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in small business under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com, Bambi.com. And make sure you type in small business and our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. 
Earlier in the episode, Shannon, you said building a factory in your brain. And number six from the Alex Banks is build your machine. Successful people yeah. design a machine to get what they want. To work on your machine, separate your two personalities. The designer, managing and planning systems to achieve goals. And the doer, the one who works according to the goals and plans of the designer. Better design, better outcomes. I, I, this is... Splitting the brain in half. And like you were saying before, sometimes you're the leader, sometimes you're the follower. And that's true. Even if you're the only person working in your business, right? You can, you can come up with the plan and then you go execute the plan and you're off to the races, but it, it's worth it to stop and spend some time planning as opposed to just do and, and, you know, plan by the seat of your pants on the fly. I, I, well, that's, it's very reactive, right? Yes. Uh, right. Know, and sometimes you, you do, I mean, you do have to grind things out daily. There's of lots course. of people that have been, uh, try to design their entire life and never get anything done. And I know some of those folks, uh, great people, but taking action is, I, I think a, maybe a better way to say, well, it's just a different way to say it. You're going to create these systems, which we love and embrace on this show uh, over goals. I, I think it's better to, you know, build the systems that you can adapt over time. Um, and then you're going to take action to implement those systems. And uh, both of them are, you know, I mean, Alex says, you know, better design, better outcome. I don't know. I, I think they're equally weighted and, and it, it depends on maybe timing when it's important that you're, you know, doing this designing of systems versus when it's important that you just have to get the work done. It, it varies. Well, and you can't get right. I, I mean, I, I think, I, no, you know, I think what you're saying is right. I don't, I didn't interpret what Alex was saying as in disagreement with that. I, the way I interpreted this was, if you have a good system, if you implement on a good system, if you take action on a good system, you're going to have a better outcome than you would if you're just taking action with no system. That's agree. That's yeah, that's sure. how I interpreted this. The, the better the design, a.k.a. the better the system you've created, the better the outcome you're going to wind up with in most cases. I mean, sometimes we've got to fly by the seat of our pants, right? It's an emergency. Yeah. You've never done this before. You need to be solving while you're planning, right? Like it's <laughs> sometimes it's just that's how a it system is too. That, that's a it system is. too. It's a system that you've developed. Yeah, yeah, in creation at the time, right? You know, but yeah. th but then you can you can refine that after the fact when you kind of post mortem an emergency or something. So uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I think it's good. That's great. He um, number seven. Yeah, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, you take number it, man. Seven. Okay, yeah, yeah. Number seven is you know write down your principles. It, it, for me, uh, this is I, I like this. I, I, it's almost like my to to did list that we've talked about on the show. Record every encounter you have. It, it, you know loss of a job, personal disagreement when you're late for a meeting. So those are all negatives. I think you should do positives as well. As well. Uh, write how you did and how you should handle each one. Update this as you get more data to form your list of principles. Yeah. Um, and, and they've got, like I said, he focused on, on things that went wrong, but I think you can also do things that went right uh, and create those principles as well. Yeah, I think I, in, in the, I agree with you. And my guess is that Alex and even Ray Dalio would agree with you in the context of this thread. Everything is about finding out, being more aware of the things you've done wrong and fixing sure. them. And so that's where this principles comes idea. Like Makes sense. the definition of principles in this thread is things you learned from your mistakes, right? Like I think yeah. that's, but so in this can, in this sense, yeah, but I, I do agree with you. It's important to celebrate the wins as much as the failures. Like you don't want to give greater weight to either one of those things because you can no, learn from the failures and the wins fuel you. When so when you're in the yeah. middle of one of those failures, you're like, okay, like, yep, I hmm, I f this one up, okay. Like, <laughs> if you build that, yeah, if you build the factory in your head with garbage material, like substandard yeah. construction equipment, it's going to fall apart. It's the same, you know, if your your thought process is always focused on what you got wrong, you, you have to mix in. That's how you build a foundation yeah. that 
you can have strength no matter how small it is. That's the whole concept of the to did list is to remind you that, you know, you probably got more done today than you think. And so you take the time to recognize those things and go, you know, that that was important. Yesterday I had to go buy a generator and I felt during it as I was sweating in the 115 degree heat out here, uh, I was like, this is a waste of time. But it's really not a waste of time because when the power goes out here and I need my house to work so I can get on Wi-Fi and get some work done, you know, that's a success and that's a good thing to do. So. Yeah. Well, you're talking to a guy who not only owns <laughs> a portable generator that can plug into his house, but now owns a uh, whole house generator that uh, oh, yeah. that will kick in whenever it needs it. So, yeah. Never thought I'd need that in California, but. Right. Becoming yeah, a, yeah a exactly. I, here. <laughs> we, we shouldn't need it here either. The, the, the main issue, we, and I know you have very different issues there, but the main issue we have here is that, well, we, we, about a hundred years ago, we reforested most of New England. It was all just fields and stuff where the sheep would graze. Oh, and then I didn't know that. Yeah, that that, that became a uh, not as profitable a business. So we reforested it with, which was great because we needed more trees and we, we could become a logging thing. But we reforested it with pine trees. And uh -huh. that's a great idea for about the first 80 to 90 years. And then those trees start falling down because guess what? It turns out pine is kind of soft. And yep. when we ran our electrical grid here, especially in New Hampshire, we ran it all above ground next to, guess what? Pine trees. So oh, we do the same out here. Yeah. Well, guess what? When those pine trees start to fall, Shannon, and trust me, they will fall, uh, then your power goes out. And our neighborhood was like when we moved in here, it took about three years for them to call our uh, our neighborhood Tree Mageddon. Because we would just have like twice a year, we'd have these like three to seven day power outages. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's fun nice stuff. One. Really fun. The My favorite was coming home from vacation two days into a seven day power outage. So, you know, you get home from vacation. You just want to chill. You want to do some laundry. You got to like get your like rekindle your life and all that. No, that wasn't part of the wasn't part of the plan. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, the next one is remember the 80 20 rule. 80% of your outputs come from 20% of your inputs. This will save you from getting bogged down with unnecessary detail. Once you've gotten most of the learning you need to make a good decision, move on. This is easier for some of powerful. us than others, but yeah. super powerful. Yeah, don't get don't obsess over the the last 20%. It took me a long time to even begin to learn this lesson well enough to actually implement it. And as soon as I did, that's where things began to take off for me, where it was like, wait a minute, I, I really don't need to obsess over this last bit of minutia. Cause I, I don't know if you folks have noticed over the last seven and a half years, but I can be, become a very particular person. Uh, but there are times when it's like, you just got to let it go and move on. And I, I yeah. routinely need reminders to let it go. But when I hear that, it's like, ah, oh, wait, 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 where's my ego. I need to push it down a little bit right now. <laughs> Got to move on. Well, yeah. and you, uh, one thing I think you say that I like is, uh, you know, perfection is the enemy of production. I think that's how you say it. It's something like that. Sure. Yeah. Something like that. But, sure. uh, it, you know, it's true. You, you have to have this, you know, minimal, minimally viable product, uh, you know, and that goes for your decisions as well. Once you have enough, you, you know, you got to go, you got to move forward. You got to not be worried about making that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. I like number this. nine is yeah. One plus one equal three. Uh, if you collaborate with another person, you'll be three times more effective than if you're operating independently. One will see what the other might miss. Absolutely. And you could hold each other to higher standards. Absolutely. This is why I'm on this podcast with with Dave. Um, it's same. Um, oh, like literally yeah. this show would have started late if it weren't for you today. If it were just up to me, it would have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got back from my bike ride and I have five minutes yep. before I got to record. Yeah, I'm literally I'm sitting here, here shirtless. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, that's just how it happens. <laughs> yeah, it's totally yeah. fine. It's, a, it's yeah. a, the concept I've, I've shared before, you know, two guys go to the gym. Uh, and when they leave the gym, they hand each other their gym bag yeah. and they say, I'll see you tomorrow. 
and it changes the whole dynamic because the other person's like, wow, this per- this person is is relying on me to be back here. I have to be back. I can't I can't make an excuse and not go back to the gym. So, and you're you can um, if you don't have a partner, you can hire someone to whom yeah, you need yeah. to be accountable. In fact, I will tell you this. If you've never hired someone, as soon as you do, you are now accountable to that person. Like I know you're paying them. But they are relying on you, A, to pay them. But more than that, they're relying on you to help tell them what you expect out of them. And and guess what? There's going to be some things. They get done faster than you think. And then they're sitting there twiddling their thumbs. You are now accountable for that. (laughs) So it's really powerful. There's I think there's a phrase, you know, hire an assistant and double your income. And it really yep. works because it forces you to today's point. It forces you to think constantly about, okay, what can I offload to this person? What new things can they do for me? Yeah. And it, it, it changes the whole framework. So having someone, um, you know, work with you, whether it's a partner, whether it's an employee, an assistant that you hired, it's, it's incredibly powerful. Last one, uh, I, I, I love this I, as I do all of them. But the last one really kind of pulls it all together. Push through. You can make great things happen, but you must make great things happen. Times will come when the choice will be to plot along normally or to push through to achieve the goal. The choice should be obvious. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> it's the yeah. first time he gets a little um, snarky in this <laughs> but it's it, yeah it, but it's it's a i like this level of snark it's like yeah and and you always i i i like the way you phrase this even better when when you're faced with this choice you know the 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 i'll say the easy path or the the, the one path or the more difficult path i don't want to say one path is easy pick what story you want to tell in the end and then right. the path is obvious yeah, I love to talk about things I've got, I've achieved, things that I've gotten done that may be different than other people. Yep. Um, maybe I'm a braggart at heart, but I try to do it with, you know, a little humility. But I find that people like listening to stories like that. They do. And they like listening to stories where you really screwed up as well. I always talk about my $100,000 television because I thought it would be great to get into that business. And I kept one TV just to remind myself that <laughs> is when flat panels were first coming out. Yeah. And people are like, oh, look at that thing. You've had that for a long time and it's in a spare room. And I say, oh, yeah, that's my hundred thousand dollar television set and so those those stories are just as powerful yeah i i made the decision it seemed really obvious to me at the time that we should be in the tv business but it still served a great purpose and i learned a lot from it um and and the story analogy really works well for me because i like to share those stories and like i said people seem to react to them uh pretty well when I'm sitting around the fire or over a beer. Um, but it doesn't make it easier. This, this, these few sentences are, it does seem very obvious, but that doesn't make it easy to, to make that decision. No. I, I'm finding myself kind of right now. I'm at that, uh, one of those points and, uh, it's difficult to take the leap and, and to go out and do something new versus doing the same thing over and over again that, you know, works, but you know, it's not, it does. I've already milked the story of this uh, specific yeah. scenario, and it's time to go do something different to create something new. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the I mean, change is scary. It, of course, it is. Yeah. Right. Like it's just how it works. We're 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 we are wired to find shortcuts. Right. It's what our brain does. If you stop and actually think about all the sensory input you get. Even just in this moment, you think, at least I, I'll, I'll make a presumption, you think what you're doing is listening to this podcast. But at the same time that you're listening to this podcast, you are ignoring lots of things around you, right? Your brain has learned how to take shortcuts to be productive and to not drive you crazy. Compare that to a baby, right? Every little thing is distracting that human because it hasn't learned these shortcuts yet. And, and these shortcuts become, we learn to rely on them because we have to, right? We need to make most of our lives happen on autopilot, but we also need to be aware of the things that are happening on autopilot in our lives so that we can choose to change the ones we want to change. And that's the hard, scary part right there is, 
telling our brains, no, no, we're, we're not going to do this the same way we always have. We're, we're going to yeah. change. It's super scary. And again, you know, scarier for for some more than others. And and as we're learning more about the 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 various uh, mental illnesses that that kind of all lump into that obsession category, those tend to be the ones that that uh, resist change the most because it's it's part of the the symptoms of that. So it's it's tough. Yep. Yeah, it's tough. Some great tips. Um, it, it, you know, there's a whole uh, course and a bunch of different stuff at, at principles.com and where uh, Ray Dalio talks about the book. He's got a new version of the book out, of course, but there's a lot of interesting things up there that you can uh, do. There's personality assessments that I thought were pretty cool for individuals mm. um, and uh, to help you get through this stuff. And, you know, I, I love this, this quote, you know, about halfway down the page principles are ways of successfully dealing with reality to get what you want out of life. And, you know, we always talked, uh, we talk on the show about being able to live a charmed life that we, uh, I think both of us would agree we've been able to do. And it's using these concepts and, uh, you know, being fortunate, taking advantage of opportunities when they came along, but also looking at these, uh, these 10 steps that we just went over. So um, I, we'd love to hear about, you know, what you use, what principles you've come up with that have made you successful or even the mistakes you've made. Um, Especially those. Feed, <laughs> yeah, those are awesome. <laughs> Feedback at um, businessbrain.show. Uh, come talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I want to hear your mistakes. We don't have to put your name on it, but we're happy to if you want us to. Keep living that charmed life. Feedback at businessbrain.show. We'll see you next week. 